Thank you very much. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here this year introducing, um, introducing. I woke up this morning and had to remind myself that I didn't have to come up here and make a speech to receive something and it had to be perfect and wonderful. But I want it to be perfect and wonderful because I am delighted to be the person to really have the privilege of um, introducing uh, Emily Kernan Rafferty, who is the recipient of this year's 14th Annual Award of Distinguished Service to the Visual Arts. It feels um, like we've went on fast forward from one year ago when I received this award. Uh, in that time, and thanks to the Brooklyn Museum and to Art Table, and to really uh, many of you women who are members of Art Table, the Elizabeth A. Sackler Center for Feminist Art at the Brooklyn continues to enjoy hundreds of uh, visitors daily. And um, I have spoken with uh, women artists, feminist artists, and dealers uh, and galleries uh, in New York, across the country, and internationally, actually, since the center opened. And over and over and over and over again, not only am I given thanks, which is very nice, but I am told that we, the center, has jump-started women's art and feminist art all over the world, and I am delighted to announce that. It was uh, at the beginning of uh, Women's History Month, uh, Mayor Bloomberg had it this year uh, in Macy's, actually, amidst handbags and, um, and cosmetics, which was very strange at 8 o'clock in the morning, and they weren't open, the counters weren't open. But in any event, Anne Fuchs, who is um, head of the women's issues for the mayor's department, was there, and she spoke. And at that time, and it was before the Center for Feminist Art had opened at Brooklyn, she declared as she was speaking, because she was honoring uh, the young women who were there that day, and all women, isn't it great to be boldly feminist? And I thought, wow, this is terrific. This is coming out of Bloomberg's office, and we haven't even opened the center yet. And um, what I discovered after the center opened is not only were there more and more women artists who had been saying they were not feminist artists because they were told by their galleries that they wouldn't be able to sell their work, but there were a lot of women who were feminists who'd been hiding in the closet because of the backlash, both the women's backlash and the governmental backlash. So it's kind of been very interesting because to watch and see women in positions of power, women who are not fearful of leading, women who have many of the privileges that men have enjoyed in our patriarchal society, not considering or understanding that they are walking examples of feminism, has always been amazing to me. And I don't know, Emily, whether or not you consider yourself a feminist. I have no idea. I didn't ask Emily. The only thing I asked Emily today was, I've been dying to know, what's it like to be president of the Metropolitan Museum? <laughs> However, Emily's accomplishments, her leadership, and her power are undeniable. Feminist acclaimed or not. In her position of president of the Metropolitan Museum of Art since 2005, Ms. Rafferty supervises more than 2,500 museum employees, serves as an ex officio member of the museum's board of trustees, and has overall responsibility for corporate foundation, and individual fundraising. She is also responsible for technical and informational services, human resources, merchandising, communications, government relations, legal affairs, finances, and financial management, everything that a president is responsible for. The remodeling of the Grand Roman Court and Islamic galleries came also under her purview, and I congratulate you for that, of course. I remember as a child going there and having dinner when it was indeed a restaurant, but I guess that was many, many, many decades ago.
Ms. Rafferty's distinguished career at the Met began in 1976 as a fundraising administrator. In 1981, she became the manager of development, and from 1984 to 1996, she served as a vice president for development and membership. Since 1999, she has been the Met's senior vice president for external affairs with special um, with responsibilities for the areas, excuse me, of development, visitor services, admissions, and special events. I guess over the years, Emily, you have come to know every aspect of the museum. She has also led the efforts to create and manage the museum's website, as well as the multicultural uh, audience and membership initiatives. Born and raised in New York City, Ms. Rafferty earned her PA degree cum laude from Boston University in 1971 and began her professional career that same year as an arts and philanthropy assistant to David Rockefeller Jr. in Boston. From 1973 to 1975, she served as the deputy director of education at Boston's Institute of Contemporary Art. She is affiliated with a number of arts and intermuseum organizations, including Art Table, the Association of Fundraising Professionals, Women in Financial Development, the AAM, and Independent Sector. She is a lifelong trustee of the Convent of the Sacred Heart, served on the Board of Independent School Chairman Association and Blue Ribbon Committee of the American Cancer Society Foundation and was president of the Blue Hill Troupe Gilbert and Sullivan Repertory Theater in 1998-1999. Miss Raverty is the recipient of numerous award, awards and honors and member of the board of directors of the World Trade Memorial Foundation. She's married to John Rafferty, a consult consulting audit partner at Ernst & Young, and they live in Manhattan with their two children. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating Emily Kernan Rafferty, winner of Art Tables 2007 Distinguished Service to the Visual Arts.